Good morning. And peace be with you. It is a joy to be gathered today and worship together here at Granby Congregational Church. If this is your first time joining us for worship in person or online, we want you to know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you are new to the church and looking for ways to get connected, or perhaps you're a visitor today, there are cards in the pews that you can fill out your information and turn those into the plates at the front or back of the sanctuary to join our newsletter or find out more about events and happenings or get in touch with myself. There are also prayer cards in the pews that you're invited to fill out if you have a prayer request that you'd like to be shared either during worship or um, with our prayer circle. Um, those will be collected today during the passing of the peace. So get your prayers in so that we can pray together later on in the service. If you have an announcement, um, I invite you to come up at this time. I have one. I want to invite folks to our storytellers um, gathering this Wednesday at 5 p.m. Our storytellers group is, is for anyone who's got a story or likes hearing stories. Um, you don't have to be a professional. You don't have to get up on stage, but it's a gathering for people who um, usually they, they choose a theme together and then um, tell stories from their lives, from the past, from the present, um, and, and reflect back what they've heard. It is a really joyful group to get to be a part of. It's even just sitting in the room, listening to one another, um, brings, forms a lot of connection and joy with one another. So I'd encourage you, if you haven't ever been to our storytellers group, they meet this Wednesday at 5 p.m. and it's a fantastic opportunity to check out. So others? Good morning, I just wanna bring your attention to the junior deacons of the day. There are eight junior deacons um, helping with worship today, and they are not just doing like little bits here and there. The lights are on because of the junior deacons, the doors are unlocked, the cups are filled for communion, the bread is cut. They are doing every part of the service, so I just wanted you to guys be aware that the deacons that have the orange junior deacon tags have been working since 9.15 and will work after service as well. Hi everyone, I'm Laura Eden Kimball and in behalf of the fun committee, today is Cinco de Mayo. Nobody is allowed to go home after church <laughs> until they go to Fellowship Hall and have some tacos with us. But before you do that, you have to hand in your passport if you brought it. We're so excited. This is the culmination of a three-month project. Most of you, I hope, have remembered to bring your passport. If not, no worries, there's still tacos. We probably cooked enough for 200 instead of like 80, but so there's tons. We're just asking for a possible $5 um, donation if you have it, just to help defray the cost of all the food that we purchased. But if you don't have money, that's fine. Still come eat, because trust me, there's going to be leftovers. We'll also maybe do a free will offering. We've got lots of court bags if we made too much, so you can bring some home and share it with your friends, whatever. We're really excited about this. The room is all decorated. Please, please, please come by. Even if you don't like tacos, just come by for a little bit. And they're chicken, so it's shredded chicken with and vegetarian refried beans, just so people know, and the rice. So the rice, the beans, and a chopped Mexican salad, that's all vegan, vegetarian, but the chicken is for those of us that aren't. Um, anyway, and tons of other stuff, so please come. Hi, I'm Ann Wilhelm with the Outreach Committee. Uh, oops, okay, Ann Wilhelm with the Outreach Committee. Um, so I, I just want to take a, take a moment to thank the congregation for all the generosity and support of the ongoing outreach efforts. Uh, one of the um, intentions of the Outreach Committee is to focus on community building and to 
develop partnerships and collaborations with other organizations and with other people who are the direct beneficiaries. Um, so the purpose is to work with people and not so much working for them. And so I want to take a moment um, to remind you of our covenant with Covenant to Care for Children. Um, covenant to Care for Children provides a safety net for children in Connecticut by providing essential support in moments that are critical for a child's ability to thrive and a family's ability to stay together. Uh, through Covenant to Care for Children, GCC was matched to the social workers of the Maternal Infant Outreach Program in Hartford. And we have real relationships at this point with these organizations, with Donna, um, Donna Redway, who's the director of MIOP in Hartford, and Catherine Howe, the, um, one of the community connecting people with Covenant to Care for Children. And um, we, we really communicate about the needs and have relationships with them. Um, I wanted to report back to you when I realized, so part of our obligation to Catherine with Covenant to Care is um, reporting what the church is doing to help their mission so that she can report to the Department of Children and Families who funds their organization. So I reported um, earlier this winter um, the results of the drive for durable baby goods. 12 pack and play portable cribs with sheets, 10 high chairs, 10 of the developmental kind of sit to stand push walkers for toddlers, six car seats, four bassinets with sheet sets, uh, 30 handmade car seat blankets, 12 handmade pack and play blankets, and uh, 10 handmade baby hats. So thank you so much. And, um, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> thanks, thank you. So that was, that was the, that was the durable baby good drive that we conducted like in February. And um, now we are launching with, as we anticipate Mother's Day, we're launching our Fill the Crib event, which Marilyn will tell us a yeah. little. I'm Marilyn Tracy. I'm going to have a new middle, middle name called Mount Tremblant up in Canada. <laughs> That's where I had my fall, broke my shoulder and my thumb. But I'm healing, thanks to my husband and many of you here. Um, but back to my up and the outreach project. Every May we have a project called Fill the Crib. This year we have two cribs. We have one in the narthex on your way in, and then we have a representation down on the floor here with a cradle. And um, on the other campus in, at North Campus, we have a, a crib also. So during the week, Sue is there. So if you want to drop by and put some items, we are asking for um, new items. And we appreciate it if you can leave the receipt with the item or leave the tag on the item so that my app can know what the price was for the item because they have to report uh, amounts now for the um, tax purposes, I would think, or. If, if Catherine, Catherine was complaining about the internal auditors. And so this is a new reporting obligation they have. So we appreciate your help by leaving the tags attached. So um, when you go shopping, think of, um, think of the uh, small essential items that are needed to welcome a new baby home. And uh, we ask that all the items, or if you buy any books or non-clothing items, that they all be new, because this is for a new baby. Um, I already mentioned that we have the two cribs. and. Uh, that the fact that we leave the uh, price tag on the item. So if you have any further questions, you can contact me. And thank you so much for your support. It's a fun thing to do to buy baby clothes. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I'm Carrie Croft on behalf of Open Cupboard. I just wanted to give a couple of shout outs this morning. Um, First, to the GCC youth that attended our um, snack pack packing last Thursday. It was a great help. They packed 450 bags in less than 45 minutes. So <laughs> you guys are more than welcome to come back. <laughs> um, so thank you very much. Um, and also, I would like to thank those of you who have donated to Connecticut Food Shares Walk Against Hunger. We held the walk, or they held the walk yesterday. Um, Open Cupboard had a team of 12 members, so I thank those guys as well for coming out and joining us on the mile and a half walk. 
Um, as of this morning, Open Cupboard has raised over $3,300 for the pantry. So thank you all very much for your donations. And um, any questions, come see me at Tacos. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Carolyn Dittis. The tag sale is June 1st, and we would really um, appreciate um, help if you want to volunteer, especially the day before and the day of the tag sale. That would be really great, Friday and Saturday. And I've been using it to um, be motivated to do my Swedish death cleaning, which is actually very life-giving because as I clear out space in the closets, I clear out space in my mind. So I've been using all this extra space in my brain to try and figure out sign up genius, to be able to <laughs> sign up to volunteer for this event. But luckily we don't need to use sign up genius because Lisa is going to be walking around with a clipboard um, with the different times, the different slots that you can sign up to help. And she's also gonna have these um, sheets in the back right after the service to, um, to say when the drop-off times are for the, for the items that you wanna donate to the tag sale and also what um, we're not able to accept. So we also um, need someone with a truck to help cart things away after the sale, the things that don't sell. And when the planning committee was meeting this week, we were fantasizing about a big, new, white, beautiful truck, a pickup truck that we thought might be available if we could figure out where it is. We were, we, I thought I saw a post on Facebook maybe once or something a while ago about a big white truck that has all these new improvements and fancy things like mud guards. Anyway, um, if you happen to know of wh who has that truck or whatever, if you could maybe contact that person and see if they would help us. So if you could um, sign up for even a, cup, a slot or two for the Friday or the Saturday, that would be really great. And um, we'll ho we hope you'll join our party and afterwards we can dance. Good morning, Stanley Hayes. Um, so after everybody goes over and fills your stomachs with some great tacos and Mexican food and has some great socialization. You can mosey on down to the Episcopal Church in Terrafil, where Duncan and I are participating in the Tapestry Concert. It starts at 2 o'clock. We had a concert last night. It's very uplifting, powerful songs. What a fantastic bunch of songs we have. and. and a bunch of singers that we sing with that are so talented um, doing some solos and duets and trios and things too. So if you would like to come down and relax, enjoy some great music for a great cause for the Kateri Medical Clinics in Nigeria, which is what this program supports, come on down, 2 o'clock, Episcopal Church in Terrafil. I don't think the right question to ask is, what is this church up to? It's more like, what is this church not doing? <laughs> so with that, let us prepare our hearts and minds as we enter into a time of worship.
Good morning. Christ gives us a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. When we love one another as Christ has loved us, we will live lives full of joy. We will live with God's love in our hearts. Let us worship the one who shows us how to love. Let us worship. For today's morning prayer, please follow my hand gestures and repeat after me. Great Creator, today let us hold each other in prayer. Mother God, today let us hold ourselves in prayer. Mother God, today let us hold ourselves in prayer. Loving Spirit, today let us be held by you. Loving Amen. Spirit, today let us be held by you. Amen. Amen. 
Let us embody God's wide welcome by saying to one another, Peace be with you. This prayer prepares us to hear the sacred story, listening with our collective wisdom ex um, by the word we now declare and ponder. The scripture for today is John 15, verse 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I, said, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because, because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I choose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Our junior deacons are doing such a great job this morning. <laughs> Jesus talked a lot about love. Often we think about, we remember that he taught us how to love our neighbors. And he would talk about this to great big crowds and say, even if it's someone you don't know, be kind to them. Or even if it's someone that maybe you don't always like, respect them. Jesus taught us that love means when someone's hungry, you offer them food. When someone doesn't have a place to live, you help them find shelter. But Jesus didn't talk just to these great big crowds trying to get to the bare minimum of love. Sometimes he snuck away and he talked with just his friends, a really small group. And to them, he told them about a different kind of love. Now, for everyone else, we talk about kindness and respect and caring for each other. But when we talk about the love between close friends, 
It requires something different of us. It requires, Jesus says in there, are you willing to lay down your life for your friends? Now I hear that and I think, whoa, which friend? <laughs> because I've got a few friends and they're great and I don't want anything bad to happen to them, but I like my life too. And I wonder what Jesus meant by that. Now Aristotle says that there's three kinds of friendship. The first kind of friend is someone, a friendship that you have where you get something out of it. Maybe they're really popular, so when you hang out with them, you become a little more popular too. Or maybe you're on the same baseball team together, and so when you get along and you're friends, the whole team benefits. That kind of friendship is a little bit transactional. There's something in it for you. The second kind of friendship is friendships where you have fun together. You know, maybe it's the friend who always makes you laugh or the friend that has the best ideas for the best adventures. That's a great kind of friend to have too. The third kind of friendship is the friendship that changes who you are because you know them. The friend that helps you see the world in a different way. The friend who cheers you up when you're sad or who you can talk to when you're having a bad day. The friend who is by your side through thick and thin and you know that there is nothing they wouldn't do to help you. That's the kind of friend that Jesus is talking about in this verse. Now someone recently reminded me that most of us are lucky if we have one kind of friend like that in our life. Some of us get a couple of them. But it is a very rare, precious, and sacred kind of friendship where there's nothing you wouldn't do for one another. Jesus is telling this to his disciples because when they're gathered together, he knows that they're going to be going through some hard times. That people are going to be mean to them. They're going to say cruel things about them. Some of them will be hurt and lonely and afraid. And they're going to need the kind of friend that will stick by each other's side no matter what. They need the kind of friend that says, even though I have a very busy schedule today, if you call me and say, I need your help, I'll put that aside and I'll be there. That's what it means to lay your life aside for someone else. You prioritize their needs the same way you would prioritize your own. So I want to tell you guys a story about one of my favorite friendships that I've ever heard about, and it is the story of Naomi and Ruth. Has anyone heard this story before? A few people, hopefully, yeah, yeah, all right. It's a great story. So Naomi was a woman who lived a long, long, long time ago, and she actually, she came from Bethlehem. Do we know anyone else who came from Bethlehem? <laughs> Jesus, yes, yeah. Naomi grew up in Jesus' hometown of Bethlehem. And she married a man, and at that time, there was a famine in the land, and they didn't have enough to eat. And her and her husband, they had these two young sons, and they were worried about them, and they said, the only way to take care of our sons is if we leave our home and we go to a different country. So they went to a different land called Moab, and they raised their sons there. And when their sons got old enough, they started looking around at their, their schoolmates and their workmates and their neighbors, and they both fell in love. They fell in love with two women. One was named Orpah, which is like Oprah, but the R comes before the P, Orpah, and Ruth. And Ruth and Orpah were Moabites. They weren't from Bethlehem. They had a different culture. They had a different upbringing. They had a different religion. 
But that was who their sons wanted to marry, and their parents said, okay, we support this. Now, Naomi, her husband died, and it was Ruth and Orpah who supported her and said, you are welcome in our homes. We'll be your family. We will love you. And so Naomi lived with them and her sons. But not too much longer later, her two sons died. And it was just Naomi, Orpah, and Ruth. So they supported each other and they became family. Their friendship meant they made sure they survived, they had enough to eat, they took care of one another, they cheered each other up on bad days. And pretty soon, Naomi got word that back home that she had been missing so much for these past years, there was enough food finally to feed people. The economy had taken a turn for the better and she was ready to go home. And so because Orpah and Ruth were her family now, they started on that journey with her. And they started out on the road, and Naomi starts telling them about Bethlehem, and oh, you're not gonna believe the food we're gonna have, and oh, I, I, hope, I hope our old neighbor's still there, I can't wait to introduce you, you're gonna have the best time. And Orpah and Ruth were getting quieter and quieter the farther away they got from their home. And Naomi noticed and she said, oh no, I've been so selfish. We can't, I can't ask you to leave your home just to go be at mine. Please, please go, go back home. I'll be okay. Go back to your people. And Orpah heard that and said, you know, Naomi, I love you but I also love my family, and I love where I came from, so I'm gonna go back home. And Naomi said, you have my blessing, please go in peace. And Naomi turned to Ruth and said, what about you, you need to go home too. Don't just stay with me, I'm nothing but an old widow. And Naomi said something really powerful. Now, what she said is located somewhere in your pew Bibles, in the book of Ruth. Anyone know where the book of Ruth is? It's probably around page 210. <laughs> if someone wants to pull out their pew Bible and turn to that. And in Ruth, chapter one, page 16 through 17, do we have someone who's willing to read it? But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do this, and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. Thank you. Where you go, I will go. Where you die, I will die. That is the mark of a true, deep, sacred friendship. That you will follow each other no matter where your lives take you. If it happens to be separate distances, you'll find a way to reach out and stay connected. You'll check on each other. You'll be each other's people. This is a sacred kind of friendship that Jesus is talking about and encouraging us, commanding us to follow. A love so deep, you would let it change the course of your life. So I pray that each of us has the opportunity to find a friendship like Ruth and Naomi, someone who loves us no matter what, someone whose lives wouldn't be the same without you and you know you feel exactly the same way. May it be so. Amen. Amen.
as we pray together as a church, we're lifting up prayers for our beloved friends and family, starting with some of the youngest members of our extended church family. We're praying with joy for Debbie's grandson, Julian Allen Silva, for his baptism last Sunday. And we're continuing our prayers for baby Asher in Texas, who's still in the NICU and having ups and downs. We're also praying this morning for Julie's mother, Marilyn, who's on hospice. And we're praying with the Henze family as Mara's mom is facing serious health challenges. We're lifting up prayers of support and healing for good family friends who are dealing with cancer diagnoses and surgery this past week. We're continuing to pray for a friend, Beth, who's battling metatastic breast concerns. Praying for Beth's stamina and resilience, comfort and healing. We're praying for Ralph, who had a serious heart attack, praying for healing for him. And we're praying for a cousin, Jerry, who's undergoing health issues. What other joys and concerns are on our hearts this morning that we would like to name before the congregation and before God? We are praying with great joy that Peg is home with a new micro valve and prayers of thanksgiving for the support that, um, that has surrounded your whole family this week. Um, a joy for these junior deacons who are doing a great job. A, joy for, a prayer of joy for the junior deacons who are doing such a great job that the older deacons should be worried about keeping their jobs. <laughs> Prayers for our youth, some of whom were dancing in a big recital last night or playing baseball or doing the road race yesterday morning and still showed up before most, well, before me this morning. <laughs> Any prayers? Prayers for their parents. Prayers for the parents getting them to all. Prayers for the parents, yeah. <laughs> This is one of those mornings where it's just so obvious what a beautiful intergenerational and how it takes all of our generations together to bring worship to life. So we are grateful for that. Prayers for all the young at heart and may they stay young at heart. Prayers for the young at heart and may they stay young at heart. Let us continue in the spirit of prayer. Holy God, our prayers are big this morning. Prayers for little babies, prayers for adults of all ages, prayers of concern and worry, prayers for healing and comfort, and in between all that feels heavy, God, there is so much joy. Joy for this incredible church family. Joy for the ways in which we reach out to one another in times of need. Joys for the call to service that every generation has heard. Joys for the friendships that have taken root here in this place. We are a praying people, God, and so we pray that you will hear our prayers. Every name, every person, every place that is on our heart this morning, that has been spoken aloud or whispered quietly in the silence of this place. 
O oh God, hear our prayers. May we feel your Holy Spirit moving amongst us, already responding, knitting us together as one body of Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. So as we come to the communion table, we remember that at Granby Congregational Church, our communion table is wide open for all people. All ages, whether you are a member or a friend or a guest, whether this is your first time here or your first time receiving communion, or whether it's your favorite meal of the month. If you believe a lot or you believe a little, or today you're not sure what you believe, if you are here and you are hungry for love, hungry for justice and hope, this table has been prepared for you. So I'd invite you to join me in our praise and thanksgiving. Welcome to Christ's table. We are glad to be here. Lift up your hunger. We do not hide our needs before God. Prepare yourself to be hosted and fed. The bread of life is our joy and satisfaction. Please join me in the spirit of prayer. Most holy sustenance, we praise you for creation and its fruits, for labor and its harvest. What a miracle it is to taste and know the holiness of life. What a mercy it is to hunger and be satisfied. You have put a grain of salt on our tongues so we might relish you. You have called us salt of the earth so we might relish one another. When the way is hard, you pour out honey. When our souls are weary, you overflow with milk. We gratefully return to your feast at this table, trusting you will meet and feed us again with the love that is a fragrant zest in the air. This feast is holy because you are God most holy. This banquet is appetizing because the Spirit calls us here. And the company is a blessing because Jesus loves each one of us. So bless this grain, bless this fruit, and bless those who eat with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We ask this in the name of Jesus, bread of life, who taught us to pray together, saying, O Holy One, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite forward Jaden, Arnie, Emily, and Vivian, our junior deacons, to join me at the table. So we remember together the night that Jesus gathered with his disciples at the upper room, how he took bread and he broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Do so in remembrance of me. And so we will do likewise. Our deacons will come with plates of bread and you are invited to take a piece and then pass it, the plate to your neighbor and hold on to that bread until all have been served and we can eat together as a reminder of our unity in Christ.
The body of Christ, let us eat together. After they ate, Jesus poured out wine into a cup and said, This is the cup of the new covenant I have made with you, a covenant of love. Whenever you drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. As our deacons serve you, you are invited to Take a cup and drink from it as a reminder of our individual relationships with God and then continue serving one another. And as one of the junior deacons reminded me before worship, we're just pretending this is wine. It is grape juice so that all may be invited and feel welcome to drink from it.
Let us pray together. Most delicious bread, once again you have satisfied us, and we are thankful. In the spirit of fullness, make us generous with one another. In the hope of all people being fed, make us salt and yeast in the world. Amen. All right, you guys can head back. Thank you. Let us rise in spirit or body as we sing together, Abide With Me. As our worship ends and we head forth to a feast of tacos, I pray that no matter where your journey takes you, the grace and peace of God will surely follow. Amen. <laughs>